What I'm about to show you is virtually going to guarantee that your prospect on a sales call is going to close and give you money before you even ask for it. And I know that's a big promise. I'm gonna prove that to be true. But first, let me give you some context, okay? There's six parts of a sales call. There's the introduction, which is where you do rapport and frame the call. There's the information gathering phase, which is where you ask all the questions. That's also referred to as discovery. There's the transition, which is the bridge between the information gathering phase and the pitch. There's the pitch, which I have another video right here where we cover how to pitch anything to anybody. Then there's the committing phase. Okay, after the committing phase, there's objection handling. However, what we're gonna talk about is the committing phase in this video, all right? Now, what is the committing phase? You've probably never heard of it, right? The committing phase is essentially getting the prospects bought in on your thesis, okay? So if you watch that last video, I'll put it you know, right here, how to pitch anything to anybody. You'll know a great pitch isn't pitching them on the product, it's pitching them on the method to success. It's pitching them on the method of getting from where they are now to where they wanna be. It's pitching them on what they need to believe to be true to essentially be able to buy. So again, I've, I feel like I've explained this so many times, but if you are Russell Brunson, a lot of you guys know him, he does not pitch you on click funnels if you watch his sales presentations. He pitches you on why funnels are the fastest, most effective way to get customers online. If you read a ketogenic sales letter, it does not pitch you on a, a pill that you take that helps you stay in ketosis. Eventually it does, but the majority of it is pitching you on, and really not pitching you, it, it, it feels like education, right? Which is what a great pitch is. It's educating you on why you haven't lost weight in the past because of insulin resistance, and why when you get into state of ketosis and stay there, it is gonna be much more effortless and you're gonna lose weight no problem. For one of my programs, we certify, uh, we certify salespeople, okay? And, and we really position it as a, is a very effective way to make money opposed to like traditional business opportunities, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna educate them on why opposed to Amazon and drop shipping and affiliate marketing and all these other uh, schemes that can work but are like kind of intense and building a lot of business, or, you know, you're building a whole business with all these skills, closing, sales closing online is a simple, effective, and fast way if all you wanna do is go from zero to 10 to 20K a month. So that's the thesis, because if I can get them to believe that belief, they buy my product as a byproduct. So, back to the committing phase, right? The committing phase, which comes after the pitch, is essentially helping you get them bought in on the thesis. So if I was Russell Branson, the committing phase, all I'm doing is I need, 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 need to get them to 100% agree that funnels are the fastest, most effective way to get customers online. Because I know if they don't believe that belief, they're not gonna buy my product. They're not gonna buy funnels if they don't believe it's the most effective, fastest way to get customers online. Does it make sense? So for instance, if I was Alex Becker, he has Hyros, right? My pitch would be all about why proper ad attribution is the key to being able to scale your ads online much more profitably, uh, much further, have better ROI, all of that stuff, right? And I'd also explain through explaining that why they have, through explaining that, they'd also be able to discover why they have never been able to scale their ads in the past. It's actually not their fault, right? They didn't have proper attribution. How are you supposed to win? You see how that alleviates the responsibility, educates them, gives them an insight, and also gives them a new proprietary method of going about it and thinking of going about it. Because once they buy into that thinking that ad attribution is the key, guess what? Well, the only way to do that is through high rows, his product. Right? which is all true, right? That's the beauty of creating a great product. Again, so if I was Alex Becker, the committing phase would be getting, making sure they're 100% bought in that ad attribution is key to scaling online. It wouldn't be 100% bought in that Hyros is yet. Does that make sense? There's two sales in every sales call. In that example, sale number one is ad attribution is the key to scaling ads online. Scale number two is Hyros is the only way to do it. Does that make sense? Hey guys, we'll get back to the content in a second, but I have a quick favor to ask. We don't run any ads or really do a lot of promotions on this channel at all, but the one thing that would really help us out if you're getting value from this is if you could share it on your socials. So specifically sharing it on your Instagram story through a screenshot or just pressing share and really sharing it on any platform. The main way we plan to grow this isn't through ads, it's through word of mouth. So if you're getting value, that's the one thing you could do. Make sure you tag me on Instagram at Cole Thomas Gordon. And with that said, back to the content. So. Committing phase has three parts, right? Three parts to make sure they're bought into the thesis. Number one is the temp check. Then we go over onboarding. Then we go over the investment, okay? So again, if you watch that video before this, which is the pitching video, I really feel like you should probably watch it before this as I'm explaining it. But essentially we go over like four pillars. 
So the committing phase happens right after we finish the fourth pillar. So right after I finish that, I'm gonna say, does that make sense? Cool, well, what questions do you have? And ultimately, what questions do you have about the four things we covered specifically? Now, very, very key that I don't say, what questions do you have? Because they might say, well, what's the price? Can I talk to one of your clients, right? I say, what questions do you have about the four things we covered specifically? Very, 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 very key, okay? What questions do you have about the four things we covered specifically? I'm directing their attention. Now, they're gonna start to ask some questions. All right, now if they don't, you just move on to the next step, which we'll cover in a second. But they're gonna start to ask some questions. Now what's key here is when they ask a question, what you wanna do is you wanna one, answer it in as few words as possible that sufficiently answers the question. And number two, before you answer it, you need to make sure what the real question actually is and if there's an objection behind the question. So the classic example I always use is somebody might ask, so is this group coaching? You could say, yes. Now, what if they were just in a group coaching program and they got burned? Well, what you just did is you innocently were answering their question, but you gave them a reason not to buy. So what you wanna say instead is, gotcha, well yeah, I mean, there's definitely parts of our program that are collaborative. So I'll give you some details on that just before I do. Um, is there a specific reason why you're asking? So you see how I did that there? I answered their question without answering their question. So they're not gonna be frustrated. It's not like I avoided it. Yeah, 100%, there's parts of what we do that are collaborative. But just so I know, like, is there a specific reason why you're asking? And when you do that, they might say, oh, well, like, yeah, I was in a program before, and, you know, there was one group call a week. I was supposed to get support there, but there's 150 people on there, so the thing lasted four hours. It was a total waste of time. I never felt like I had support. I got stuck. So I just want to make sure this is not that. You see how this is helping? And then so now what we can do is we could say, oh, okay, great. Well, like, look, here's the deal. We do do one-on-one coaching. And let's say you didn't do one-on-one coaching and you only had groups, so you have to pivot this. So look, our, our support is out of our community, which we basically give 24-hour response times that you're gonna have anytime you want to. So number one, you always have that. But number two, we do have group, but we have five times a week and the max I've ever seen on a call is 15 people. And honestly, if you show up right away and just submit your question beforehand, you'll pretty much get answered immediately so you could be on and off within five minutes. So opposed to going through what you know you went through before, do you see like that would how that would help you a lot better? So you see how I basically covered the objection there before have, actually having the objection. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you, hit, you remove hidden objections before you answer the question. The second thing you want to do is you also want to make sure you answer the questions in as few words as possible. What I just said was a great example, but sometimes you can answer the question in one word. Absolutely, you can answer the question in a sentence. You know. Um, I can't think of an exact question, right? But you, you, you want to answer it, and typically I recommend two sentences or less, or even one word if you can, 100%, absolutely. And, and, and look, like you don't have to ask, is there a specific reason why you're asking the question every single freaking time? You want to save it, because it's weird if you do it every single time. You want to save it for those ones where you don't know if it's a hidden objection or not, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to, ask, we're going to answer their questions. Now, what's very, very key, is after you answer the question, you need to direct the conversation forward, not them. So do not stay silent and wait for them to ask another question. That's what's taught a lot. Instead, say, does that make sense? Cool, what else? What other questions do you have? That little phrase right there will keep you moving the call forward. Very, very, very key. So we do that. What else? What are the questions? They ask the question, remove hidden objection, answer in one to two sentences. Does that make sense? Cool, what else? What are the questions? Eventually, you're going to say, I don't have any other questions. Then you say, cool, how do you feel? How do you feel about those four things we covered specifically? Like, you know, we talked about your real estate business. Do you feel like your real estate, biz- that is what you need to be able to get your real estate business to $20,000 a month? So you see how I did that? You wanna use it that, I kinda, I kinda asked like three questions there. How do you feel? How do you feel about those four things specifically? Do you feel like it's what you need to get to blank? I always frame it like that for whatever reason. Typically I don't recommend asking three questions in one sentence, but I just, I just do it with that one. And that, that always works because one, I want to make sure I, I want to direct again, not how do you feel about buying? How do you feel about the method, the thesis? Are you bought in to funnels being the way to make, you know, cu- get customers online? Are you bought in the idea that ad attribution is the only way to be able to scale your on- ads online? See what I mean? So I want to make sure they're bought in on the thesis. Now in this phase of the call, 
what I'm going to do is when I ask that question, what I'm looking for is certain tonality. So I'm looking for, oh, dude, absolutely. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, man, this is totally what we need. Like, I, you know, I've been thinking about this for a long time, but you really reaffirmed it, and this is what we need. I want something like that. If I get something that's like, yeah, I mean, I, I think so. Okay, that's not a, that's not yes. <laughs> now, if they say no, I mean, you're, you're in trouble. But usually, they don't say no at this point if you've done everything correctly. They'll give you like a, yeah, I, I think so. You know, or yeah, you know, I, 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 I kind of like it. See, that's not a yes. You want the assertive, like certain tonality. So if they say, I think so, you say, I, you're, I always like make fun of them. I'm like, I think so. Okay, well, like, look, tell me what's really going on. Like for instance, on a scale of one to 10, one being like, dude, I hate this guy. I want to get off the phone. And 10 being like, that is exactly what I need. Where do you feel like you fall up precisely? You know, whatever they say, if they say a seven, I want to say, gotcha. If I can ask, what do you think is keeping you from being a nine or a 10? Same thing with an eight. If they say a nine, I'm still going to ask, is there anything at all keeping you from being a 10? And a lot of times here, they'll say, well, like, you know, like I, uh, it's just the price. And I'll be, oh, no, 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 I'm not asking if you're a 10 and a 10 on the price or anything like that. I just want to know in terms of the process, in terms of the four things, do you feel like you're in alignment with that? Do you feel like that process specifically is what you need to be able to get your real estate business $20,000 a month or more? Okay. So I'm going to redirect away from the price back onto the process because I need them bought in on this is the right thing, now is the right time, before we get into the price drop. Because if they're not bought in on the thesis, trying to handle that post price drop is extremely hard. So we don't wanna do that, okay? So we'll, we'll go through a little bit of that stuff and uh, we wanna you know, cover any objections there and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So they're gonna be, let, let's just say in this example, I answered all the questions, I said, how do you feel? Do you feel like this is what you need? Dude, absolutely. I'm gonna say, cool, well, you have no questions. You feel really good. What's next? Where do you want to go from here? I love that phrase. And people, even prospects would be like, oh, that was smooth. You know, not that you want to appear as like a smooth salesperson on the call, but like it, it's, it's, it's a good way to keep, trans tra keep transitioning. So gotcha, man. Well, you feel good. Have no questions. What's next? Where do you want to go from here? So I'm letting them, you know, I'm giving them the illusion of control. And what I'm doing is I'm restating, you have no questions. You feel really good. You, and I'll say, you feel like it's what you need to get to result. I'll even restate what they said. You feel like it's 100% what you need to get to result. What's next? Where do you want to go from here? So I'm restating that they have no questions and they believe that what we have is what they need to get to result. And then I'm giving them the illusion of control. Very, very nice little recap to get to your pitch. And then they'll say, well, you know, like, how do I move forward? Well, like, what's the price? And so you say, yeah, man. So here's the next steps. You'll process the investment with me. Then once we take care of that, what we're going to do is do this process called setting baseline. So we're going to get you on essentially an onboarding call. Before that, you're going to do some homework that helps you prep for the call. But once you're on the call, we're going to basically map out what I call your implementation pathway. That's going to be when we're going to meet, how we're going to meet, how often we're going to meet, things we're going to do for you, things you're going to do right away, things we're going to have you do in the future. We're going to set up a meeting cadence for the future so you can leave that call with a full sense of clarity on exactly what your next steps are. And all you got to do is simply show up and take the next step forward. Does that make sense? Cool. And the investment is just 9,800. And the investment is just 24K. And the investment is just 68K. Okay? That's how you pitch the price. So, what I do there, what's key is I explain the onboarding before I pitch the price. The reason I do that is I want to paint a perfect picture of exactly what's going to happen next and raise their certainty with what's going to happen next before I say the price. I don't want them to be like, well, shit, when I give you 10 grand, what, what's going to happen then? I want them to know exactly everything that's going to happen next. Okay. That builds their certainty. It's like, think about them. They're like making a leap, right? So it's like, you know, like they're on a cliff and they got to leap to the next cliff. What we want to do is if you don't explain what's going to happen next, they can't see that next cliff. They're just making a leap into the freaking abyss. So we want to paint the picture of the next cliff so they can, oh, I only got to jump there. Okay, cool. I know what's going to happen next. It raises certainty. So. That's pretty much it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, obviously the next step would be objections. So that's gonna be a different training. If you want the uh, pitching training, there's a video here. If you want the uh, full sales process, there's a video here. Hope you enjoyed it.